I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm Steve Bailey, I'm the Executive Director of the Maine School Boards Association, but also the Maine School Management Association. And part of what Maine School Management uh, provides is opportunities for board workshops like this tonight. And uh, both um, Board Chair uh, Stephanie Euler and uh, Superintendent uh, Grant asked me to prepare information to be able to be shared with you tonight. Um, I do want to uh, just talk a little bit. I will be using slides, but mostly as a kind of conversation starter. And would be able to present, and will be presenting information, but also would like to have this be uh, informal, an opportunity for conversation as well, in terms of questions as we go. Um, <coughs> Mr. Shelley. Good, how are you? Good. Good. Uh, so with that, I am going to just kind of go through um, slides to be able to talk a little bit about uh, what's in your packet, how things are organized, and be able to help uh, you make sense of, of materials tonight. I do want to just uh, bring attention to the uh, two smaller uh, brochures that are on the left-hand side. One is the uh, trifold uh, that you have in front of you, and essentially that's about uh, the Maine School Boards Association. And if you open it up, you can see uh, the nine different regions uh, that are uh, organized uh, for, for the School Board Association. Um, and you are in um, Penquis, uh, so you're in the Region 2. And I do know that uh, some of you have been attending uh, the regional meetings that are held, uh, because we do have regional meetings about four times a year. We send information out to everybody, and it's really a matter of who can attend, who's available, what night uh, uh, you're available when, the, when your board doesn't meet, your school committee doesn't meet. Um, but we do hold those um, in September to be able to go over resolutions in preparation for the Delegate Assembly. And then again, uh, typically in, in March, in May, sometimes we will have another one in, in January. But there are um, uh, people within your region. There are three different uh, directors on the Maine School Boards Association from Region 2. Mike Williams is a director from Greenbush, uh, Faye Anderson from RSU 22, uh, the Hamden area, and then Nikki Fortier from uh, MS84 in the Guilford uh, area. So, if you have questions, if you have things you'd like to make sure that uh, MSBA needs to hear about, um, you know, please, you can contact them. Um, uh, Peggy lembo Splain is the president uh, this year. Um, uh, Jane Osborne will be the, uh, is the president-elect, and she'll be elected, well, actually, she automatically goes into the presidency at the uh, Delegate Assembly, which is October 21st. So, information about MSBA. The other thing I just want to make sure is that you're receiving emails from us uh, probably under two different headings. One would be under MSMA, and actually this afternoon uh, the MSBA uh, update went out. Uh, so it had some information about the uh, fall conference as well as a couple of different articles. I uh, talked also about a campaign that we're doing um, through uh, many of the associations, uh, many of public schools, and so that's, that's also in the, uh, in the campaign itself in, in the uh, update. That's, uh, so that's one of the emails. The other email that you, you probably should receive is from MSMA, and that's where you receive the uh, policy updates, the uh, legal updates, and the law updates that Charlotte Bates uh, typically at, uh, is the editor for, and uh, we'll, we'll send information out you know, for you. So if you're not getting any of those, um, please let me know. Is everybody <coughs> getting those in terms of recognizing that you're getting information through those two emails? Okay, that's good, because we, we want you to be for sure. Um, then otherwise, in terms of your packet, on the left-hand side is just a copy of the slides. And uh, this, they're set up so that you can take notes on them if you want, because they're three, three slides per page. Uh, you also can refer back to them after the uh, workshop tonight, you know, should you, you wish or should you desire. The right-hand side of the uh, packet, we have a number of different handouts for you. We won't go through all of these tonight and we make them available for your use afterwards as well, but many of them are uh, your own policies, um, policies that we may put in as, as sample policies, 
and things to be able to talk about for the various topics that uh, we will we will cover tonight. Um, so with that, um, just want to talk a little bit about purpose for tonight. The main purpose being review of Maine school board statutes, um, where and how and how, why you, you have authority and where you get it from. Um, roles and responsibilities for school board members. Um, uh, we're saying school board, you're actually a school committee, right? As a municipality, uh, you're a school committee. Um, but uh, school board is, is a kind of a common term that's used for RSUs, MSADs, but municipalities typically uh, go by school committee. Um, certainly want to see what we can do to be able to think and talk about how you can enhance uh, learning as school board members. Yes, for tonight, but also how can that happen you know, throughout the course of the school year as well? Are there other ways that you can, can uh, learn about that? And one of the things that I would, would just stop and, and talk about right now, it, there are two different things that uh, can happen. One is, and you probably received an email uh, yesterday uh, about the uh, board chair workshop. There's a pre-conference that uh, occurs every year prior to the MSMA fall conference. Uh, that's Wednesday afternoon, uh, the 25th of October from 2.30 to 5. Uh, typically, we put it that Wednesday afternoon because if people are coming down and going to the conference as well, then they can stay over if you need to, if, if, uh, you, you, you need to travel and stay overnight. Um, and then the conference itself, um, the MSNA Fall Conference for school board members and for superintendents is the 26th and 27th of October. Uh, we've got over 60 clinics uh, this year, um, numbers of them from districts, uh, as well as from some of the professional organizations across the state, and also from uh, two different uh, legal firms, and also from uh, the Department of Education. Uh, in addition to that, Bill Daggett is the uh, keynote speaker on uh, Thursday uh, morning, and will be uh, speaking to the topic of uh, learning uh, 2025. Uh, really thinking about uh, what students are going to be needing uh, to be able to uh, be uh, successful uh, learners, you know, both within schools and how education might look different within schools, as well as uh, beyond uh, after they graduate from, from school. So um, that those are things that will be happening on the 26th, 27th. Again, another terrific way of being able to network with folks, uh, see some uh, topics, some clinics that you'd like to participate in, and at the same time, um, uh, have the opportunity to e extend your, your, your learning as a, as a school board member. Um, in addition to that, there are the region meetings that we talked about, and then from time to time we do have webinars that we, we host. Uh, sometimes we will put them on and we'll, we'll record them, so if you can't make it the night that it's actually being held, then you can go back and have access to, to, the, to the webinar itself. Um, so the, the fourth bullet up there is really to establish a strong collective understanding of roles and responsibilities. And so that really is where we're going to, going to begin tonight. Um, but before we do that, um, I'd like to try to start, uh, because uh, this, this uh, session is really for you, um, is to identify, are there things that uh, you'd like to make sure uh, they get talked about tonight in terms of uh, a, a board training? And I know I, I understand in terms of your your structure, we have five uh, school committee members here from Herman, uh, one from Levant, one from Carmel. Both, 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 both from Levant. Okay, all right, my, my mistake. Uh, so we end up um, in terms of um, uh, a, a, a different kind of a board, uh, but one that uh, you've, you've come accustomed to, to working well in terms of your, your structure for your, your high school and, and, your, and your RSU, so, um, or your Herman um, school district. So with that, um, are there things you'd like to um, find out about tonight or have talked about? Um, are there questions you have you want to make sure that uh, get asked or answered? If not, then we'll kind of let it flow. And, and uh, as they say, in terms of the bottom of that, you know, feel free to ask questions as we get into information. Some of you I know are veteran uh, school board members, uh, so this, this is going to be a, a refresh for some. And uh, for others, uh, your experience here will, will really be of, of, of value to those that are, are, are newer on the board. Um, first, this is one of the places that we like, like to start, because it's really important from the standpoint of both what your responsibility is, as well as, as um, who you're responsible to. So, 
In terms of the oath that you all took after you got elected, you went to your town office. Um, this is a, if this wasn't the exact wording, uh, something very much like that. Um, and it basically talks about uh, you faithfully discharge into the best of your abilities the duties and come on, on you as a school director of, um, it would be RSU 87, right? Or uh, Herman um, School Department, um, according to the Constitution and the laws of the state. We put that up there because really it's the laws of the state and the Constitution that, that really provide you the authority and responsibility of you being a school board member. A, a word that's not up there is Herman, or the town of Herman. And while um, that's, that's vacant and it's not indicated as part of it, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, your, your role as a, a school committee member comes from uh, laws and comes from the legislation that's been passed by the, by the legislature. So you are the Herman School Department, and you do provide uh, education in, in the town of Herman, and at, and at the high school level for both uh, Carmel Vent and for Herman. Um, the responsibility, the authority you get, you comes from the legislature. So we'll, we'll talk about how that feeds into uh, your roles and responsibilities as, as board members as well. Um, going on to that next slide, um, you are the governing body. You make decisions for what happens within your school department. And I do want to make a uh, mention because this, the second bullet that comes that we, that on, the, on the slide up here, your duties come from Title 20A, and it's uh, subsection 1001. There are 22 different uh, subsections in there where you get your authority and where you get your duties. But I need to make sure here, too, that you understand that the, the, the duties are, are given to the board for the school committee. They're not given to individuals. So you as a school committee, the Herman School Committee, and you, which includes uh, either two representatives from 87, um, are given the authority to be able to make the decisions. It's not uh, decisions that are made by individuals. And we'll, we'll speak to that in the next couple of slides that, that we, we talked about. But it's very important that you understand that the, the authority is given to a collective group. It's not given to individuals. Um, so in terms of that, you have a policy that speaks to that. And we'll go to the right-hand side of your, your packet. Um, it's going to be handout uh, numbers one and number two. Handout number one really is a, a synthesis or a summary of, of the legislation that is, is put forth within the, the state law book. And there are seven different areas uh, that are highlighted here. Uh, legislative and policy making, educational program uh, approval, uh, personnel and employment, and uh, you, you do have a role in that. Um, you're, and, and specifically as a school committee, um, you have one employee, and your one employee is a superintendent. Um, and that's the decision you make collectively to be able to hire, supervise, as well as evaluate the superintendent. Um, in terms of other employment decisions, uh, the superintendent is required by law to bring to you um, nominations for teachers and nominations for principals. Those are the two pieces within the statute that uh, speaks to that. Um, it's, uh, it's possible, and some districts do do this, where they would bring other um, personnel to the school committee as well, sometimes for information, some other times some other boards also act on those. And I guess I'd ask here, um, educational support staff, is that brought forward as an FYI or is that something that the committee uh, actually takes action on? They take action. Yes, and like I say, it's, it's, it's uh, determined uh, by school committee what you want to do in that particular case, uh, but by statute, only the principal and, and teachers need to be brought you know, by nomination. Now, once the nomination is brought to you, you can approve or disapprove, but if you approve, uh, a third step needs to be taken, and that's for the uh, uh, superintendent to offer the position to the recommended person. It's not always that that third step has to be taken or is taken, um, because there may be some things that may be found out uh, in between the approval time and when the superintendent actually would go to offer the contract, that uh, it may be determined that it's not in the best interest of the district here for that uh, contract to be uh, actually provide, given to and then signed. Yes, Haley. So when your superintendent is offering the job to the employee before the board has voted, how do we handle that situation? 
when the staff already knows that they were hired or have already been told before the board has So what kind of situation are you talking about? So if you're hiring a teacher or a principal and they know before the school committee has even voted on it, that's not... Are you talking summertime? Are you talking uh, I'm talking times? anytime. Well, typically they, they can't be hired until the, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. There are a few school committees, and we don't recommend this, uh, and, and um, attorneys wouldn't either. Um, but sometimes in the summertime, uh, I have seen uh, school committees give authority to the superintendent to hire uh, for the school committee then to approve after the uh, offer has been given to the uh, teacher. Now, typically that happens in the summertime. It happens when everybody else in the school world is, is trying to hire. And in the shortage situations that we're in, uh, people don't want to be waiting on um, uh, having determinations either by a school committee or um, if they've got you know, competing offers you know, being made you know, uh, between districts. And so sometimes that uh, contingency is placed there that the superintendent can go ahead and, and offer the position that the school committee then would need to come back and, and approve uh, in order for that person to actually be hired. Because for teachers and for principals, uh, that approval, a nomination has to happen, the approval by the board has to happen, and then the, the, the superintendent you're giving the position it would, then, it would then occur. So I don't know if that follows into any of those uh, situations that you asked the question about. Um, not necessarily. The other question is, is I wonder about the legality of if they're told they get a job and then the school doesn't, the school board doesn't approve it, um, what retaliation that may set up for There, there isn't any uh, because uh, they, they can't, there's no guarantee of the position until they've been approved by the, by the school committee. So in, even in those situations, the, the, the superintendent may say, I have, I have the intent of bringing your name forward you know, to the school committee. I intend to you know, hire you for the position, but that's an intent. But it can't happen until the, the school committee has done the second step, and the third step is the superintendent actually uh, providing the contract. Now, that's going to be delegated to somebody else if, if the uh, word is to continue to go forward with the process. But. Thank you. Okay. But there is a difference in notifying somebody you intend to take their name for versus offering them a contract. That's correct. Or That's right. Votes on it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, again, um, well, in, in your situation here where it's even for the uh, educational support staff where you do depend on approval uh, by the board before you offer the contract, you, you're using the same process there as you would for teachers and for so if they're already started working and they're receiving income before the board has approved it. In situations, this is a recommendation that I would make, if, if there are situations where you need to have somebody uh, in place uh, to take a position, my recommendation is that you call a special meeting and to uh, have that action occur uh, so that uh, you've got people uh, that have been gone through the appropriate steps to be able to be uh, working you know, within the Herman School Committee, okay. within the Herman School Department. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so in terms of, we were still working down this sheet, weren't we? Yes. Okay, after personnel and employment, you have a quasi-judicial role to play also because there are times where you may need to be uh, the, uh, the determiner of, of an appeal or some other type of situation. And I think of mostly uh, teacher dismissal or discharges uh, or uh, student expulsions. Those are places where uh, you are the final determiner. Of, of what the what the situation is going to be, because of that, we ask you in most situations uh, to um, try to remain as neutral as you can in those situations, so that you don't become biased before you have to actually be the the judge and jury on, on certain situations. So uh, we ask that you not be the lightning rod for you know, being the advocate for you know people that uh, may be looking for you for some support and some help as as uh, they try to bring their situation forward. In smaller in small towns, sometimes that's just, that's difficult because you know everybody, you know family members, you know potentially what the situations are. But you want to try to, as much as possible, remain as objective as you can because you'll be called upon to make those hard decisions, which are probably some of the most uncomfortable ones that uh, you'll have to face, you know, as a, as a school committee member. 
Um, budget and finance, uh, obviously you have the responsibility of providing the resources for um, your students and staff to be successful here in your, in your, your, your school district. Uh, and the same thing is true for facilities. You know, what do your students, what do your staff need to be able to be successful? And then also communicating with the public. So those are things that are listed within the, the, the statute, but that are uh, uh, also repeated here. They're followed up by your policy, it's handout number two, your school committee powers and responsibilities. And it's, it's this particular policy, and I, we, we do speak about policies, I know you had a policy committee meeting before uh, this, this meeting, um, but as you take a look at this particular policy, you see that uh, your first letter, in terms of your responsibility, is, is to enact policy. Uh, one of the major responsibilities of the board is to be able to uh, monitor, uh, adopt, a revised policy as needed for you as the district. Um, the two paragraphs up above that, though, are really, really important uh, because it speaks about uh, some differentiation that we're going to make between what the school committee's role is and what the superintendent's role is. So that second paragraph, it talks about the school committee concerning itself primarily with broad questions of policy rather than with administrative details. And that means that you typically, as a uh, school committee, are, are operating at you know, 10, 20, 30,000 feet level, rather than you know, down in the weeds in terms of uh, seeing what actually happens within the school. Uh, there's a slide we may get to it a little bit later, but it really talks about you as a school committee uh, wanting to make sure that uh, these schools are operated well, as opposed to operating the schools. It's not one of the things that school committees, you know, should uh, get themselves involved with. You hire people to do the job. You, hi you hire the superintendent. The superintendent, with your approval, uh, hires other people to do the work that is, is deemed necessary to be able to run the school successfully and effectively. So that's, that's very important. Uh, the second sentence in that second paragraph, the application of policies is an administrative task to be performed by the superintendent and his staff, who shall be held responsible for the effective administration and supervision of the entire school district. So, as I mentioned before, one of your key roles is to hire, supervise, and evaluate the superintendent. Part of the role of the superintendent is to bring information to you through other people who work for the school department to be able to uh, provide you with reports, to provide you with uh, information, data about how the school district is doing, so that you as a, as a school committee can make a determination, are we going in the direction where we want to be going? Are we going in the direction that uh, we said we wanted to be headed? And uh, what are the results that we're seeing to be able to help provide uh, support for um, our evaluation of, of how things are going? So. You folks really uh, need to be holding the superintendent accountable and also the, uh, and he's holding the other folks accountable who work for him uh, through, through the hiring of that. So that's where you as a school committee uh, do see that want to make sure that the school is well operated. Um, superintendent is involved in making sure that there, he is operating the school along with staff that have been hired. Um, so other, other uh, responsibilities, on that handout number two, um, you, you see um, what, what you have is your roles. Um, planning for the uh, expansion, improvement, financing, construction, and maintenance of a physical plan. Prescribing the minimum standards needed for the effective operation and improvement of the school system. Requiring the establishment and maintenance of records, accounts, archives, management methods, and, and procedures incidental to the conduct of school business. Approving the budget. Financial reports, audits, major expenditures, and what you need for that budget. Establishing funds necessary for taxes for the operation, support, maintenance, and improvement of the school system. Adopting courses of study. Providing staff and instructional aids. Evaluating educational programs to determine effectiveness. Providing for the dissemination of information relating to the schools necessary for creating a well-informed public. And approving or disapproving personnel nominations. So, those are the things, really, that school committee members need to be involved with. And as you identify your um, agenda items and topics from month to month, as you take a look at uh, your um, school committee governance calendar over the course of the year, you should recognize you know, these types of things that are included in terms of a month to month basis or over the course of the year. 
in terms of the kinds of things that will, will be brought to you for, for various actions. Any questions on any of these? Seem to make sense in terms of what you do? It's good, I hope so. Um, now, I bring this first one up as a, as a policy just to be able to help see also that the policies really we, we view as your uh, owner's manual. Um, that um, really uh, the policies are the foundation of, of how your school department is run, your school system is run. Um, most of these, well, I would say not most, a lot of these are required policies um, and they follow statutes that, are, that, are, that have been um, passed through the legislature. Others are recommended policies and you can get uh, both of those uh, through the uh, uh, index policy uh, newsletter that's provided typically around January, February of each year that, that's sent out to uh, all, all uh, school committee members. Um, and, and that would indicate what the required policies are. Um, so again, policies as the owner's manual in terms of how your, your district is operated along with the, the, the laws of the state. <coughs> um, I do want to talk about this one a little bit because um, as, as school committee members, you run and you're elected individually. But as soon as you are elected and you've taken your oath of office and you, you start to come uh, to, to meetings, um, you should be thinking about, okay, how can we function as a team? Because, as I mentioned before, the authority is given to the full uh, school committee. It's not given to individuals. So part of that is, how do you function together as a team to be able to get the work done in the school district? So, you know, part of that is how do we interact individually with each other? Uh, what are the goals of the district? Is there a, a, a mission statement, a vision statement? And uh, you, are, you, are you working together to try to achieve that? Uh, but what, what can you do to be able to work together? You have no authority <coughs> as individuals. Even the school board chair has no authority uh, the, the, uh, as an individual. The school board chair will act as uh, the spokesperson you know, for the school committee. Uh, if, if need be, or that, that uh, responsibility may be delegated to the superintendent in certain times of crisis or times when uh, fast <coughs> communication may be needed you know, for, for the district. Um, but you as a, a school committee, and it says board up there, but uh, let me just finish this sentence and we go through. You as a school committee really want to think about your success uh, as, as a group is tied to your, or as an individual member really is tied to your success as a, as a full body, uh, both in terms of your own view as well as the view of the public. Yes, Haley. Um, perhaps you'll get there, but so with that being said, you know, the chair doesn't have individual authority, but there's this mis misperception that they get to know information or have information to the rest of the committee doesn't get to have. And there's a special relationship between the chair and the superintendent that other people on the committee don't get to be privy to certain information. Can you clarify that? Well, we'll talk statute. a little bit about that. Um, okay. Well, there's nothing by statute that would say anything different than right. what I've already said Thanks. in terms of uh, they all have um, similar uh, opportunity for information. There is, uh, I'll go to your point, uh, there is a, a, a different type of relationship between the superintendent and the, and the school committee chair just based on the need for, for planning, for uh, sharing of information, uh, discussing of information. Uh, the superintendent often will use the uh, school uh, committee chair as a sounding board for uh, uh, a trial balloon in terms of checking things out um, and then having the opportunity to, to communicate information to the rest of the uh, school committee. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as we get into uh, uh, handout number seven. Let you be, we'll go forward with that a little bit. Um, so, I just want to look a little bit in terms of effectiveness, because when you're working together, um, that no authority except when acting as part of the majority of the board, that work actually happens when you're at an officially called school committee meeting. So, uh, with um, is seven your um, number, or is five your number, and... Um, how is a quorum determined in terms of your the composition of the of the uh, the full board? Uh, the full board is four, and but yeah. Full board. You mean quorum? What are you saying? Full board is four. So the quorum. Here you go. Is four. Okay, so um, that's the majority. 
Right. Yeah. So every, every board meeting um, is is seven. Seven is your is your is your actual board. Okay. So it's, uh, four would be a uh, majority of the board. So in terms of this particular slide, um, if you have an officially called meeting, uh, you need four members to actually hold your meeting, right? And uh, four members can determine any type of uh, positive or negative vote uh, based on, on the, you know, who's here. Um, if you have less than that, obviously your, 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 your majority numbers go down. If you have six, I mean, it's still four. If you have five, it's three. Um, but the majority, there has to be a decision made, um, and then that action, is whatever is taken, is, is the action that is the will of the board for that particular meeting. Um, so I guess my, my point in saying that is, um, number one, it has to be an officially called meeting, and number two, your actions are determined by the majority of those uh, present and voting you know, that particular night. Um, and, and, and so again, it, it speaks to the issue of your, your actions are together as a team or as a board as opposed to uh, individuals. And even if individuals uh, present um, may not agree with uh, something that was said, or something was determined by the vote, it's still the will of the board in terms of what the majority of that, that board is. And as board members, we'll get into this a little bit in terms of uh, code of ethics, uh, I'll take a look at that in, in, in just a minute. Um, but the intent is that you know once, once a, a decision has been made, then that's the decision of the board, and, and people uh, ne necessarily, typically, um, support that decision after it's made. And I will have you look forward on uh, handout number E um, and look to uh, your, your letter H uh, down the sheet uh, that speaks to, um, I will support a decision graciously once it's been made by the majority of the school committee. Um, so this whole statement, set of, set of statements, is your um, Herman School Department um, Code of Ethics, which really is, um, I'm going to talk about this as your uh, job description, uh, where we talked before about the policies as the uh, um, operating manual, that this really is more like a job description in terms of how uh, board members, uh, school committee members, you know, view their interactions with each other, as well as their uh, opportunity to interact with the public, as well as with staff. So um, if, you, if you do take a look at this in a, in a closer way, uh, you take a look at letter B, I will at all times think of children first and base my decisions on how they will affect children, their education, their training. Really important uh, statement uh, for you. Um, D, I will remember at all times that as an individual I have no legal authority outside the meetings of the school committee and that I will conduct my relationship with the school staff, the local citizenry, and all media of communications on the basis of this fact. Um, e, I'll recognize that my responsibility is not to operate the schools, but to see that they are well operated. Um, I will seek to provide education for all children in the community commensurate with their needs and abilities. Uh, we went over H. Um, I have a question about H, actually. Go for it. Um, so if a vote is taken illegally and not in accordance to law, I mean, this, the defense was stated, well, H is the defense. I need to graciously accept it. Well, I can't accept it if it's not in accordance with law and there's a refusal to correct and redact the motion and, and start over. Um, there is the ability to be able to uh, rescind or to um, reconsider. Uh, reconsider if it's at the same night, and I think it's rescind if it's at a, a meeting to, to follow. Um, so Robert's Rules does allow you know those actions as well, if, if that might necessarily have to happen. So there are, are situations like that that might occur. Well, if a vote is completely illegal and, and done in secret, then you have to start yeah. over. So I'm, I'm not aware, or we're not talking about that typically. Well, I'm asking you the question just because of age and that being the defense, I just want clarity. I don't know if this would be defense. That would be something if that were a question, then that would, if it were raised by the, the uh, school committee chair and the superintendent, you know, to uh, an attorney to find out whether or not the vote, you know, was considered illegal. If, if it was, then, then, uh, then uh, action would need to be taken in terms of how to, how to correct that. 
but uh, in terms of, of uh, H, in terms of being your normal means of, of operating, uh, this, this is typically you know, how things are done in terms of you know, working together as a team and, and recognizing that um, you're not going to necessarily win every vote, uh, that uh, there are going to be things that uh, you, you need to understand in terms of how you work together as a, as a, as a team and as a group to be able to uh, uh, you know, play well in the sandbox and uh, to be able to get things done that are going to support students within the district. So uh, that's, that's one of those things that um, you really identify how, how this can be done, you know, with, with the group that you have working together. Um, I, as I would go along, I'll not criticize employees publicly, but will make such criticism to the superintendent for investigation and action. Now, if indeed uh, there's a, a situation, and you may have policy KEB, I don't know, but uh, if there are situations where uh, you as, as uh, school committee members have questions about the superintendent, then you would ask the school committee chair. So, I mean, there is a, a means there for, you know, that, that type of opportunity as well. But typically, if there's a situation that uh, needs, needs questioned, then you go to the uh, superintendent to be able to make that known. Um, Jay is another important one. I'll make decisions openly after all facts bearing on a question have been presented and discussed. In that particular case, what we're talking about here is really not having your mind made up before you get to the meeting. That um, you know you, you have the opportunity to be able to uh, both influence others as well as be influenced by others. You know when you come to a meeting and you have a, a topic on the agenda. Um, you've made the motion, the, the seconds have been made, and then you have the opportunity for discussion, conversation, and really to be able to be informed about an issue uh, before you actually can, uh, can go ahead and, and uh, take, take a vote. So, again, code of ethics, really important. Uh, one of the things that we do recommend is that um, school committees you know, take time to actually review these on, on an annual basis. Uh, the value of that is that you, you just Take time to reconsider what it is for your uh, responsibilities to each other as well as to the children, uh, you know, within the within the school committee, uh, within the school district. Um, some people do that, and some boards do that uh, within the summer, where they may take time for a special workshop. Some people call it a retreat. You know, some people just call it a, a, a special workshop where they come together to re review their their mission, their vision. And take a look at okay, so how did we do as a school district the last year, and, and uh, think about you know setting some goals uh, for the next year, uh, and at the same time reviewing the code of ethics so that uh, uh, people can renew their commitment to each other as you go ahead and, and uh, continue into the into the next uh, school year. Um, this is this is one that I uh, this is uh, three sets of slides that I, I wanted to just. Uh, pay some attention to. Um, and it really speaks to um, who you represent. In thinking about um, state law and statute and uh, court cases uh, that have been uh, tried, um, sometimes when people are elected to a school committee or when they're elected to be a selectman or a select person or to the legislature, um, there is Difference, differences in terms of uh, what your role is as a school committee member. Um, and it's difference in terms of the term representative for versus representative of. When you think about uh, being representative of, excuse me, for, um, people see themselves being elected representatives of a particular constituency. So someone going uh, being elected to the legislature, they've been elected by uh, a certain district, uh, be it a senator or be it within their uh, representative. Uh, they voice only the self-interest and opinions of that constituency because there are people there who are trying to get laws passed based on who elected them. And while they may be listening also to other folks, but they're really working on behalf of the, consti on the constituency's interests. So this would be a representative for. Um, representative of is really more of a situation where you're listening to all the opinions and the information around you, be it at the uh, Little League field or the grocery store or in your neighborhood or other people around town. Uh, but you understand what those constituencies are talking about to you, um, and you're going to be bringing those in, that information uh, to your school committee uh, decisions. Uh, and you would be considered there as representative of. You voice the interests and opinions of those you know best and then vote on behalf of the best of the overall interests of the organization. You know, the organization are the students in the school district. 
It, it's not necessarily the neighborhood you're elected from. It's not necessarily uh, a vested interest of somebody who has talked to you and said this would be really, really important. You know, for the time. Now, you may agree with them and you may, you may go ahead and voice those, but in terms of your overall action at the end of the day, you should be thinking as a school committee member, which is very different than uh, being elected uh, to another office within the state, uh, thinking about the overall interests of the organization, you know, students as well as uh, the district. So I, I do want to make that distinction in terms of uh, representative for versus representative of, and as school committee members, you're responsible for, at the high school level, everybody, all students. Uh, from your, your three towns, you know, at the uh, pre-K-8 level, you know, for Herman, all students in terms of, of whoever they are, wherever they come from, it's your responsibility to be thinking about them and, and what's in the, in the best interest of, of those, those particular students. Um, so, as you move forward, I do want to talk a little bit, too, about roles and responsibilities, thinking about school committee and then superintendent. And you have a policy, it's handout number five uh, in your right-hand right packets, uh, that really speaks to a school committee and the superintendent relationship. I've talked about the duties that you have deemed upon you by the legislature. Uh, there are 22 of them in terms of uh, Title 20A. Um, and then by policy, actually in the statute, there's also section... Uh, uh, 1051 to 1055 that speaks about the duties of the, of the superintendent. Um, so as we take a look at this particular policy, we, it says in the second paragraph, as we talked before about uh, policy making being the uh, role of the school committee, management of the schools is the function of the superintendent. The school committee holds the superintendent responsible for complying with all the applicable laws. Uh, and that paragraph continues. Um, the school committee collectively and as individual members shall recognize the superintendent as the education leader of the school department, provide direction for the superintendent through written policies, objectives, and so on. And then down at the bottom, um, well actually we'll, we'll continue a little bit, uh, give the superintendent full administrative authority and support for properly discharging their duties, hold all school committee meetings in the presence of the superintendent, except as otherwise permitted by law. Uh, refer complaints, criticisms, and requests to the superintendent or other appropriate personnel and discuss them at school committee meetings only after administrative solutions have been exhausted. So that's where I, I again would ask you not to be the lightning rod for um, your situations that come to you. Now people are going to seek you out because you're, you're school committee members. Um, they know 24-7 that you're a school committee member. And so they're, they're going to try to request for you to be a, a good listener, which, which you should be as well as uh, to have your, their, their particular situation passed along. And in those situations where somebody does speak to you, I'd ask you to, to share the information with the, with the uh, school committee chair uh, and the superintendent so that they have a heads up as to what the situation is and they can help plan for uh, what, what uh, the next step might be with regard to how to deal with that particular issue that might be brought up by a, by a resident or a parent or a business member of the community. Um, and then obviously F, uh, evaluate the superintendent, provide up appropriate opportunities for the superintendent to share his, his perceptions regarding the working relationship between the school committee and the uh, superintendent. So you've, you've set up through policy something that also was represented by the model and by the slide up above. It's also on your slide number six uh, in terms of your handouts. Um, the board really should be operating on that left-hand side of the slide. Um, thinking about vision, mission, goals, policies. Um, you're not uh, the people that uh, should be uh, intent on trying to do the operation of the, of the, of the school district. Uh, you should be uh, concerned with uh, the what, in terms of what is it you want your students to, to be, do, and act, and, and, and uh, be able to perform once they finish eighth grade, once they finish high school. Uh, your questions really are going to be more about the what, the why, and the how much. Yes? That's a good question. What do I do as the chair if an item is brought up that hasn't gone through the E, the appropriate channels, um, within a meeting? Coming back to this one. Mm -hmm. What should you do with a complaint that has... Yep, come up from a committee member, yeah. 
from a committee member here. Yeah. I, I um, talked to the superintendent. I would identify. In the middle of the meeting. I in, well, we're going to get to that because uh, there shouldn't be surprises that there should be coming up uh, in the middle of meetings. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, but that, that goes to uh, our communication strategy, which should be number seven. Um, so in terms of um, the board, um, you really, in terms of that, what is going to be your, your role? The superintendent's role is going to be to think about and be concerned about these types of questions, how, when, where, and by who. Um, it's that type of question that he's going to be considering so that he can be able to make a recommendation to you because he wants to be well informed to be able to bring a, a recommendation, be it um, about transportation, about facilities, about staff, about curriculum, about anything that uh, has to do with uh, what the school committee is going to be making a decision on. That recommendation comes to you, you vote, and then uh, you send it back to the superintendent for implementation. So it's just like the uh, nomination process of uh, uh, principals and teachers and your educational support staff, it's a, it's a uh, two-way process of a recommendation and action by the school committee and then implementation back by the, by the superintendent. All of that, and I, I do highlight the, the two words at, at the bottom, um, because effective school committees do work toward trying to establish trust. Trust with each other, as well as trust between uh, the school committee as well as the superintendent in order for that to be a, a seamless operation you know, within, within your, your school department. Um, so uh, as communication improves, as communication stays strong, um, then more uh, uh, deposits get made into the trust bank. And so you have more to be able to build on in terms of, yes, we're working in the operation in, in a manner that we want to, and we're seeing the, the district go in the direction that we want. Um, sometimes when you get um, withdrawals made from the trust bank, then you end up with you know, some questions in terms of you know, are we going the direction we want and are, do we have the players on the team that uh, really uh, need to be helping uh, move, the, move the district forward. Um, so there's definite distinction between uh, roles. The superintendent's going to be uh, involved in uh, the objectives, the action plans, the regulations, procedures, in terms of making sure that the, the work gets done within the district. Now, part of that does depend greatly on communication. So if we take a look at handout number seven, this is a sample from another district, but it, it's, it's very clearly uh, established so that uh, a school committee was wanting to find out what information that they could have that would help them um, be a, a better school committee together. What is it that they would, would be able to have individually to be able to help do their jobs to, together better as a, as a school committee? So I am going to go down through these, um, both the top part as well as the bottom, because it's equally important for the superintendent to have uh, consistent information from you as a school committee. So, so first of all, number one, regular timely communication from the superintendent via email regarding the state assessments, programmatic changes, or other matters. Basically just information coming from the superintendent that would be to everybody. Uh, information that is for your information that uh, you could use to be able to uh, make decisions better at a board meeting. Um, if there has to be, if there is some type of an emergency, to be notified via email as soon as possible, and sometimes, or maybe by phone, or maybe by text. But you know, in terms of any any communication method feasible, where you you would be able to get information as soon as possible, and hopefully that information comes to you ahead of the information going out to the public. Um, because it's important for you as board members to have information should the public come to you. Now that may not always be possible, but that should be a goal in terms of that, that being able to happen. Um, this next one, three, to receive school committee electronic packets with supporting documentation the Friday before the scheduled school committee meeting whenever possible. Uh, I don't know, your meetings typically are Tuesdays, Monday. Mondays? Um, when do board packets go out? It's Thursday. Thursday? Maybe. So. Um, th That's not time. Thursday to Monday, um, maybe a short amount of time. Do they go out electronically or paper form? Mm -hmm. Electronically. Um, because part of this um, <coughs> goes down to uh, the number four comment down below. And if you take a look at what the superintendent could expect. Number four for, for the superintendent, school committee members will call the superintendent with questions about agenda items or supporting materials at least 12 to 24 hours before the scheduled school committee meeting. 
The, the reason that's there, and even though this is a sample from some other district, I, I totally support this. And I, a prior superintendent, knowing how uh, board and school committee members' schedules are, um, being able to have information in a timely manner to be able to read it, to be able to understand it, to be able to then potentially ask questions about it prior to the meeting, I think is really important. And I would recommend, um, and I, I have seen some folks, um, they send it out seven days ahead. So if, if the meeting's on a, a Monday, then the previous Monday uh, is, is the date that the information goes out. If they need it on a Tuesday, then they try to do it uh, the Tuesday before. Uh, other folks, it may be five days uh, in order to be able to get information out. And the reason is because of that number four. Because the other thing that I would expect um, you as, as school committee members to be able to want to do, if you had a question uh, that you would uh, want to seek clarification on, you would want to have time to be able to read it and have, uh, especially where your meetings are on a Monday, uh, potentially that weekend is not an available time to be able to, to get clarification on an issue. So, you know, could that go out uh, an additional day or two in advance so that uh, there's more time to be able to have uh, you potentially read it, understand it, and be able to ask that question so there aren't the surprise questions that come up, you know, at, at, at uh, a board meeting. Number eight above and number seven below, uh, you protect yourselves as board members. Uh, when I say protect, I really mean in terms of uh, not being surprised at a board meeting and, and, and to look as if you don't, aren't prepared for, you know, what um, the, the meeting's about, uh, if, if indeed uh, those kinds of questions come up, you know, during a meeting. So, uh, both to help yourselves as board members, as well as to help the superintendent, um, if there's a question you have, uh, either about the material within the packet, or a question you have that uh, you think you'd, you'd like to have uh, addressed at the board meeting, um, I urge you to, to call the board school committee chair, call the superintendent ahead of time so that there's enough time to plan should that, this be on the agenda or should this be something that should be moved to a, a meeting you know, later on uh, and, and brought up at, at another time. But agenda items or agenda or, or questions that come up that aren't on the agenda, um, I think uh, really provide an interruption to the planned intentional business that you've planned for that particular meeting. Um, the superintendent and board chair, one of their responsibilities is to uh, help plan for you know, the important work that you do as, as your school committee. So in terms of that, that uh, work, uh, it, it's really important that um, uh, you, you give thought to what's important for that month in terms of where it is over the course of the year. If other questions come up uh, that uh, school committee members raise, uh, then you need to determine, is this something we put on this agenda? Is this something that we don't have as an agenda item because that's going to be your decision also? Or is this something that gets moved out to another meeting? So first of all, I don't know if that helped address your, your question, Stephanie. Yes. It did. And then Haley, you had a question. Um, yes. So. A lot of times if there are questions, either one, the information we're just getting the day we get there, some of the information, we're handed information when we sit down that we've never seen before, or um, we ask for things to be on the agenda and it's been a year and we ask every single month and it's never on there. So if you ask, you have to have that conversation. If you're, if the communication isn't working outside of the board meeting, and you have to have that conversation in public, whether it's uncomfortable or not, it's unbecoming. It is, I admit that. But if it's not working behind the scenes, so to speak, then when else are you supposed to say, "Hey, I'm trying to address this, and nobody's listening"? So I haven't seen. There are two things that I would I would uh, respond to. One thing I haven't seen your agenda to see whether or not uh, you have on the agenda a spot that calls for adjustments to the agenda. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, there's, if there's that particular piece on the agenda, and um, have you also allowed for items to be added to the agenda um, at the meeting? Okay. Not so, necessarily from board members, only from the superintendent. Well, um, there is, if, if you have adjustments to the agenda, there is the possibility where um, a, a school committee member could uh, request that an additional item be, be placed on the agenda. It would uh, be uh, necessary for that to receive a second, and then at least a, a majority, uh, if not two-thirds, uh, action to be able to have that item be placed on the agenda for that night. Now, 
that said, uh, often those items that are, are placed like that, unless uh, there's information to be uh, known, seen, or, or discussed, and uh, be able to be uh, uh, discovered or, or, or considered, you know, for that evening, it's difficult, you know, without preparation of that particular item to be able to make a decision on that. And so I'm going to go to your point and make, make another recommendation. If there's information that you feel as if you don't have enough time or you didn't have enough information, uh, that uh, someone on the committee can make the motion to table uh, the item uh, and to be able to have it be considered, you know, at a, at a following meeting. It can be tabled to the next meeting. It can be tabled until, you know, you have uh, additional information to be able to, to make a decision. So that, that is a possibility that you can do to be able to uh, consider it if, if you didn't think you had enough time or information to make a decision. School committee members should feel as if you're informed to be able to make decisions. You're making important decisions in terms of uh, what, what you have in terms of uh, uh, school students as well as, as, well as staff. Uh, Stephanie. Yes, we also have a spot on our agenda at the end for future agenda items every single meeting. So. Okay, and then I haven't seen uh, looked at your policy in terms of how agendas. Uh, and some school committees do have uh, agenda format as well as agenda determination and so typically in terms of agenda determination it's, it's typically the uh, su uh, superintendent with the board chair who makes the final determination as to what's on the agenda for that next meeting and that's part of that planning time that goes into okay well what's your business for the next meeting and so you, you'd have to be making the decision is this something we want to include or not. Um, I don't know in terms of your policy as to whether or not there's a spot for um, a certain number of, of uh, uh, school committee members identifying that they, yes, want this on the, on the, uh, on the agenda and therefore it's on versus um, the superintendent and uh, uh, school committee chair making that decision. So, I was going to say our, our policy, <coughs> the superintendent and the, and the chair form the final policy. Um, we do have a policy, I can't remember off the top of my head what it is, that allows for, if an agenda item doesn't get put on, um, three members of the committee can, can hold a meeting, can schedule a meeting, uh, if the chair doesn't right. put what they want on the agenda. So, another alternative. And that's, that's part of the policy. That's yeah. How would you point. facilitate that communication, not doing it illegally? That's a tricky one. So would you have that conversation? In public, so you say, okay, I want to have uh, the bidding purchasing policy addressed, and I mean that, that's that's a tricky one. So what do you mean illegally? Well, like if, if what Jesse's saying is, if we ask to have something on the agenda and it doesn't get put on there over month after month, um, how do we facilitate getting three people to have that? Meeting. Well, four is your four is your quorum. Well, see, that's the thing. Some of our policies say three, some say four. So that in itself is a mess. I, and I don't know that in terms of your three and your four. Yeah, but. three, three, five, majority, and then some other policies say four. So it depends. That's why it gets tricky with a high school situation. I, I sent you an email last fall about their authority and how it works and what they really should be voting on or how it works with our quorum. I think our town council is working on it. Yes, Could we take this offline, Micah? Could we look at the previous minutes, perhaps, that we've all approved to see if there's agenda items that have been mentioned every month that haven't been added? I said, could we take this offline and could we have Jody perhaps look at previous minutes to um, see what future agenda items were mentioned every month and weren't brought forward so that we could look at addressing those? No, I think it would even be in minutes from That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And we approve the minutes the next time. So. Perhaps sure. could she go back through and I'll look for those for us? Emails and text messages. But it sounds like there's other vehicles mm -hmm. where you make a motion during an agenda adjustment and we get seconded and voted in and things like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And again, we either need the majority or two, I think it's two thirds in order to be able to have that added to the agenda. Um, continuing down this communication uh, um, agreement. Um, Five, the school committee members, well, no, let's go back up to four. Um, all school committee members will receive the same information. And this was uh, a point that Haley had, had raised and asked before. Um, one member's request for additional information results in all members having the same access to the same information. Communications are done for all school committee members. 
Now that doesn't mean necessarily that the uh, superintendent doesn't have a conversation with the school board chair, the school committee chair first. Because there are going to be some situations either that he's going to give her a, a heads up to say, you know, look, this is uh, something that I, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've come to know and this is something that we're going to have to address as a, as a school committee. And so it's determined, okay, what's the information that is, is, needs to be shared and then that's sent out to everybody. Um, but everybody should be having that information you know, at, at the same time. So that it's not something that um, is, is held you know, separately from, from uh, any, any particular people. Um, but, but that is something that will help both increase uh, communication as well as help increase trust in terms of, yes, uh, there's transparency there in terms of uh, what's being shared with, with all folks. Um, five school committee members treat each other with, and, and staff with respect. Uh, the superintendent staff will treat all school committee members with respect and reasonable requests for additional information will be satisfied in a timely manner. That goes down to number four down below as well. Because if you get information, and this is where I do think that the Thursday to Monday timeline might be tight, if, if the superintendent is getting a request on a Monday afternoon prior to a Monday evening meeting to be able to have more information for you uh, at, at the uh, school committee meeting, that's not enough time. Um, depending upon what else is going on in terms of their world of that particular afternoon, um, more time may be needed to be able to make sure that, that information is provided to you. And they want to do the best job they can to be able to have you have the information to make an informed decision. So um, that pairs with making sure that if you have questions that you ask ahead of time and you know, 12 to 24 hours is reasonable. I don't think it's reasonable though on a Monday, you know, at four o'clock meeting to call on a Sunday afternoon at four o'clock, you know, to be able to, to, to try to get that information and expect it, you know, for a Monday night. So um, your, your, your Monday meetings are part of the problem. Yep. And then the, the other problem is just in terms of you know, the weekend and, and uh, potentially a, a short amount of time. So to be informed, <coughs> I, I do think that you need the time. Now, the superintendent expecting down at the bottom, well, let me go back to number eight. I did say no surprises. And no surprises, again, for the, the superintendent down below. You want to um, both give the appearance as well as be prepared for being a, a very functional body and uh, working together you know, with the superintendent and school committee together. You, you do that when, when you don't provide hiccups in the road by, by creating <coughs> surprises at, at, at your meetings. Um, so, direction is given at school committee meetings when the majority of the school committee gives direction. Superintendent doesn't work for one person. Superintendent works for the school committee. <coughs> whatever the direction, whatever the decision is of the, the school committee, that's the decision made and so that's what the, the superintendent has been asked to do. And so it really takes the majority vote of the board for that to happen. Um, school committee members will be respectful towards staff and be respectful of staff's time. That's the other thing, you know, uh, multiple requests, you know, uh, if you want school work to be done by the district, then you will let them do their work. And so, you know, a, a frequent request of the, of the superintendent or of the business manager or of the director of special services or of the transportation director, um, you need to allow them to, to get their work done that you want them to be doing for the school district. Um, school committee members will read all supporting documentation before the school committee meeting. Again, for the purpose of being informed before you have your discussion. Um, we talked about the 12 to 24 hour calling. If you have questions, the school committee as a whole will approve a future agenda item before significant time is expended. Again, that's the, going back to the issue of the superintendent doesn't work for one individual of the school board. He works for you as a, as a collective whole. Um, school committee members individually or collectively will not meet with district staff or union leadership or to circumvent the superintendent to engage in an agenda. Um, so that's, that's another important one too. You know, respect where your boundaries are, respect where your, your, your guardrails are to be able to do your work as, as a school committee. Um, so I don't know whether something like this would be uh, effective or not, uh, whether it would be useful. It certainly can be sent as a, a Word document, uh, Micah, you know, in terms of whether you or Stephanie would like to bring this to the school committee to be able to be considered, you know, for a, a, a possibility. Any other questions on that one? Okay. Um, we'll move, we talked about those, I think. Review this.
this one just a, a little bit. Uh, role of the board chair, because the board chair, school committee chair, does have a little bit of a different role than other than other members. And if the vice chair also is is participating in the uh, smooth operation of the district, uh, then they're going to be involved in some of these these steps as well. But the board chair, the school committee chair, is the planner, the organizer, the spokesperson, also the delegator in terms of uh, assigning uh, uh, committees. Uh, appointments to committees. They're also the li liaison and confidant. I talk about this in terms of other board members, school committee members, um, potentially having conversations with the uh, school committee chair who then may share information with the uh, superintendent. You may not have the opportunity to, to see the superintendent all, all the time, uh, but if you can share information with the uh, uh, school committee uh, chair, then uh, that person can share with the superintendent as well. Um, talk about the, the school committee chair being a guide for new members. Um, some school committees actually have um, mentors or they have people that really kind of take new members under their wing and try to help them through that, especially the first year of, of being a board member. And then also, uh, important and difficult to do at times, but the caretaker relationships because, you know, a board works together best when you've got uh, folks that both uh, respect uh, each other's uh, relationships as well as uh, participate in a manner that uh, you know, provides uh, respect for one another you know, within and across the board. Um, this is what I talked about before, know your lane. Um, your responsibility is not to operate the school but to see that they're well operated. So that 30,000 foot level in terms of policy, in terms of helping delegate to the superintendent you know, those roles that are important for him to be able to uh, complete and conduct um, his job successfully. Um, one of the things that I um, wanted to talk a little bit about um, was Robert's rules. Um, and on your handout number nine, we do have a handout, it's, it's actually what we call our, our Robert's Rules placement. The, the, the sample code of ethics is on the back, but in terms of Robert's Rules, really Robert's Rules are used as a guide. You end up with law guiding first, and then policy second, and then um, Robert's Rules really is your guide to be able to uh, continue to um, help move your meetings along. And so you, you should have someone that has some semblance of um, parliamentary procedure, um, you know, kind of in your back pocket. Um, and know if you get caught in certain things, you know, what do you do to be able to make sure that you're, you're going uh, through your motions uh, successfully and uh, sequentially to be able to take the actions that you want to, to see happen. So this particular motions chart, it does provide, you know, some um, reasons what you want to do. Um, some of the main motions that are that are, are, are made, and also what level of, of uh, support is needed. You know, can it be used to interrupt? Uh, does it need a second? Uh, can it be used to close debate? Um, and what's the vote that's needed? Is it a majority, or is it two thirds? Um, so this again is, is something that that may be of, of help to you. Uh, there are uh, different uh, uh, booklets you can get. Uh, Jim Slaughter, uh, the parliamentarian, uh, is, is a good resource to, uh, to use if, if you're looking for something that, that, that can be uh, used to be able to be helpful uh, for you in, in terms of your, your actual um, going through the uh, actual agenda at your meetings. Um, <coughs> Are there specific uh, questions you might have about Robert's rules or parliamentary procedure? No? Okay, good. Um, then what I'd like to do, and then I have talked about this before, under uh, board and superintendent uh, responsibilities. Um, and I'm going to just go back to this, this slide again. Um, and I don't want to harp on this too much, but again, the superintendent takes action from the whole board. So individual board members or the board as a whole 
Um, it's important to allow the superintendent to do the work that they're hired to do and not, well, I'll use the word, micromanage. Because you, you as board members, you know, shouldn't be in the weeds of, of doing the, the work that the administrators have been hired to do. Uh, you have roles, uh, certainly policy, and be able to hold the uh, uh, superintendent accountable so that he also then can hold the other folks accountable. But that, that uh, role that you play is, is really important uh, meeting however often you do. Uh, is it monthly? Um, you know, to, and then within the month, you know, beyond that, uh, between that, you know, make plans for what the next meeting is and also make plans for what the, the plans for the, the, the full year uh, can and, and, and should be. Um, another piece that I want to um, talk about is you as a board, um, and attributes that, that come together effectively for you to be able to work to, uh, strategically together as, as a board. Um, there are times when it's, it's really important for you uh, to uh, think and to be able to act strategic, strategically and, and, and think analytically, um, being able to express your, your thoughts together uh, when, when you're meeting together. And that's important for you to be able to, to share those uh, reasons that other people may connect with and be able to help make, make decisions. Um, it's important for you to think about how you can develop an earned respect of uh, group members of, of key stakeholders. Now, it could be town council, it could be other citizens you know, within the community, it, it could be your staff. But how can you as a, as a school committee earn that respect based on the kind of actions that you take and the kind of discussions that you have to support them, especially thinking about how you, how you can support your students. Um, working well with others within a collaborative group, you have the responsibility for uh, de group decision-making authority. And again, it's that group making, uh, decision-making authority. Uh, with your demonstrating the understanding of, of fiduciary responsibilities and duties. You are the group that needs to advocate for what your students need, what your staff needs. So in tough times, in tight times, and in all times, uh, you will be the ones who will have to develop as well as then communicate what it is you need financially to be able to support the students. And so uh, I say if, if not you in terms of being able to advocate for the students, then who would? You've been elected you know, as, as school committee members to be able to uh, provide uh, a communication about the kinds of things that are going to be needed for, for your students and, and staff. Demonstrate understanding of the difference between oversight and supervision. You provide oversight, superintendent supervises. You supervise the superintendent, superintendent supervises the rest of staff. Um, earn reputation for emotional maturity, personal integrity, and honesty. And then demonstrate familiarity with knowledge of effective board governance. Now the board governance we talked about on, back on, on uh, handout number one. Uh, being concerned with legislative and, and policy making, educational program, personal employment, quasi judicial, budget, finance, school facilities, as well as the communication with the public. Those are the kinds of governance roles that you play as, as, school, as school committee members. Um, eight effective traits of effective school boards, eight traits of effective school boards. That you have high expectations and uh, clear goals. That your belief that all children can learn, that you focus on achievement and you think about and have that achievement, those results reported to you to be able to have you know how the district is doing. Um, think about collaboration and communication, work on that, know what that means and it looks like. Be data savvy, meaning that you use the information that you get to help you make decisions on what your next steps and what your next goals will be. Uh, make sure that your goals and your resources align. You may have all uh, uh, productive goals in the world that you want, but if you don't have resources to support them, or if your goals are off kilter with what the resources you have to be able to use, then as a district, you're not going to approach the, the targets that you've set for yourself. Um, think about how you continue to develop team leadership, and then also that uh, you, you participate in more events like this, where you would consider you know, some other team training, where you're, you're, you're coming together to be able to work together on, on certain goals. Uh, a book that I've left with Stephanie, it's called uh, How to Become a Better Board Member. 
Um, it is a, a, a book that does describe uh, either in paragraphs or in some chapters certain things that might be helpful for uh, the board to consider as a, a book read or a chapter read and then to come back and talk about how can we work together you know, as a board and how do we learn together as a board. What are some certain things that may be helpful? And actually schedule some times in that you could use, like tonight, you know, at, a, at a, either a special meeting or part of your regular meeting, and in, incorporate that as part of a, a workshop time uh, to be able to have that time to be able to discuss what's helpful and needed, you know, as, as board members. I just have a question because I love the idea of workshop and open communication and working together, and it really makes the meetings run smoother. Um, it's something that I propose that we do in subcommittees, and something I propose that we do when there's because I've attended a lot of your trainings, so if, if there's something that's controversial and you know it's going to be, you know, whether it's community or as a board, it's better to, to get together and work it out, but not in an actual regular meeting. Um, do you have advice about how to get the committee to understand that workshops are a tool that we're allowed to use, utilize and use? Well, just based on your, uh, and I haven't looked at your policy, but my guess is it's going to be set up uh, similar to other folks where you do have your regular meetings, you have your special meetings, and your special meetings can also be a workshop, and then you may also have your emergency meetings. Now, emergency meetings typically are, are identified as, let's say you had a boiler go out, or, you know, during the hurricane you had, you know, uh, part of your roof come off, you know, where you needed to have some fast action on certain things. But the special meetings really can be um, uh, board workshops, whether it be on budget or whether it be on some other topic that you wanted to have some input uh, from the community on uh, to be able to, to receive some information that would perhaps inform you as to how you might uh, want to uh, vote on a, on a particular decision that you've got <coughs> later on. Um, but it really is dependent upon the board in terms of how you want to use your time. I am suggesting that uh, you potentially you know, consider um, you know, taking some time to be able to, to continue to work on, on board development. And that's that, that last part in terms of, of training as, as a team. Another connection to that is um, uh, a policy that uh, I would recommend that you consider for uh, the board, and this is uh, handout number 22, uh, which is uh, school board self-evaluation, where the uh, school committee itself uh, takes a look at uh, the um, 16 different categories that are, 16, 14 different uh, criteria that are on the back of policy, sample policy, BBAB, um, from board visioning down to uh, M, uh, board legislative involvement and advocacy. And then uh, right behind that is a uh, school board self-evaluation sample form where a, the, a board uh, can uh, determine how often are, are these statements happening. And so you, you actually take this as a self-evaluation, you uh, look at the results, you collate the results, you bring them back for a conversation and say, how are we doing as a board? And uh, use, use some workshop time to be able to say, are there things that we might consider to, that uh, we, we might like to work on? Uh, we, we do these uh, three or four or five things really, really well, but uh, we'd like to pay some attention to uh, other things like um, monitoring the student achievement, or board committee structure responsibilities and processes, or fiscal oversight and resource allocation. There are those kinds of things that an evaluation like this uh, might, might uh, bring some information back to you, and it goes back to that being data savvy, you know, how, we, how can we use information to be able to help uh, you grow and, and develop as, as a board. So um, that, that's the way that I might, might recommend that you, you consider um, uh, using some information to be able to help help uh, you, you continue to to uh, uh, grow as a board. Um, yes, Stephanie. Um, I know we skipped over for time, and that's okay for the social media guidelines. And I'll probably suggest for a potential um, agenda item if yep. we don't already have one. Um, the board member use of social media. I think that that's an important one these days. Um, but can we go back to the slide, please, about a word about email? Sure. Is um, what um, on the bottom of page seven? Um, so what I'm hearing you say is we really should not be sending emails talking about board items. Correct. Outside of the board meeting. Yeah. Um, information can be sent by you and by the superintendent uh, with information that would go to all the board, but that would be for an FYI. Okay. 
And it may be something that it may be a part of a packet agenda item or it may be something that uh, he would want to have you know about uh, prior to coming together for the board meeting. However, uh, that doesn't mean that you, you should start or anybody else should start a conversation with a reply all to say, well, this is what I think about item four on the agenda. Because essentially what you're doing is you're, you're conducting business outside of, uh, outside of the board meeting. And you only can conduct business when you're legally called together uh, to discuss that information you know, in an officially you know, public, public setting. Um, so uh, the information can go out. But it, it, it shouldn't be discussed, it, it shouldn't be um, uh, responded to, you know, to be able to have folks identify how you feel on a particular item. Um, it, it should be something, okay, well, this is something that I'll, I'll need to know about, it's in, important for me to have, and I can use it as part of the conversation when we get back together as, as, a, as a full board and we, and we discuss that particular item. Uh, on the agenda. Now the same thing could be true in terms of a question a, a board member may have and again I would, I would recommend that that not be done in terms of I got a question about such and such and you know, blast it out to the, the full board because once somebody starts to respond to that then you're um, not in compliance with the Freedom of, Action, Freedom of Access Act. Well you are because it's full you are worthy. Not. What? It's follow worthy. The emails are follow worthy. Well, that's what that's what number two says. Basically, anything you do as part of your uh, board business is a potential public record, and uh, therefore would be a, a followable um, communication. And uh, so, therefore, you'd have to turn it over. The school committee would have to turn it over. The school superintendent would have to turn it over if if a, a certain request were made in that particular way. And, and again, you, you don't want to, if, if that was uh, followable and uh, it was retrieved and it was determined that uh, you were conducting business, you know, outside of a publicly called meeting, then there's a, a violation fine that uh, you potentially would have to pay, uh, uh, as well as potentially be recognized that you're not doing business the way the Freedom of Access Act, you know, mm -hmm. uh, asks you to, to do business as, as a public entity. So FYIs to everyone is okay, but not communicating. So if you're sending a, a statement to all so they're all informed, so they can be well informed before a meeting is okay. Yes, it is. And, and uh, say this is FYI, please do not okay. respond. And sometimes uh, that information can be given uh, on a BCC versus on a, on a uh, you know, regular address in terms of your, your, your top line, you know, so that it goes individually to everybody and then people don't necessarily see who the other BCC is. And so if you were to go to reply, you'd, you'd just be replying to the, the person sending it to you and not the person that the other people on the, on the full email. Um, and you're saying FYI is okay for any board member or is it typically? Typically from the chair and from the superintendent. And uh, I, I do that because again, the, the, uh, the, the superintendent, if, if a board member has a question, I would ask them to ask the chair and the superintendent and then have the chair of the superintendent ask that of the other people. Because what you don't want to do is, is uh, start to have uh, that level of, of conversation and communication outside the board meeting beforehand. <coughs> and if, if, if that question is sent to the board chair and to the superintendent, then they can, they can uh, formulate uh, a strategy in terms of, okay, how can we get this discussed? You know, what's the, what's the manner in which oh. we can have this information well, then to be determined? Sorry, so with that then, having meetings before the meetings that don't have all the board members is frowned upon? to make decisions? Not by the chair and the superintendent. That happens that happens routinely, and that's expected in terms of the superintendent and the board chair meeting together to be able to plan the meeting, that's expected. With the chair, mm -hmm. but no one so, yeah. The chair, sometimes vice chair, depends on how the, the uh, uh, committees operate. That's, that's the purpose, if we go back to the roles of the, of the chair, that's, that's one of the main reasons is to be able to have um, I, I typically always met with the, uh, the, the, the board chair and uh, from in, in planning my meeting a week ahead of time to be able to identify what's going to be on the agenda. Matter of fact, your policy would say that in terms of the, uh, uh, the superintendent with uh, participation from the chair, you know, will determine the agenda. <laughs> so that, that's how that happens. Yeah. Did that cover that one? Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Okay. The other thing that I would say is please be cautious about including any type of uh, uh, student name, student initials, uh, uh, staff, staff name initials, you know, any of your subject lines or any, any of your, your uh, communications. Uh, you want to protect the privacy of your staff and of your students. 
Um, and, and so, you know, be very cautious. But if you have something that important to discuss, um, get on the telephone and call and talk with the board chair, the superintendent, or, or um, go see them personally if they have the information in person as opposed to, you know, providing that through, a, through an email or a text. Because when you talk about social media, Stephanie, it's not just email. It's texting. It's it's uh, so it's uh, Twitter. It's uh, you know Instagram. It's it's any of the social media platforms that could be full of all just as just as easily as as uh, uh, about that as email. well. So if we've gotten follow requests for communication that we've had as a board um, through social media, and then that documentation I've tried to provide to be compliant with follow requests and. It's, um, wasn't uh, nobody would answer my emails? How do I comply? I'm making sure that you have this information for the follow request. Um, do you have advice about how to handle that? What do I do with the information if I know that this was follow requested, but I'm reaching out to the superintendent and the chair to say I need to give you this information? Um, Who was it requested by? It was through a follow request through a citizen. Through a citizen mm -hmm. and. So if they follow a request and say, have you had this communication? Was it of you as well as all other school committee members? Yes, it was sent to all the school. So then I said to the chair and superintendent, I have information. Where do I have to do or where do I send this to be compliant? And it was over three different months, I think it was, that I've sent at least two emails to say, what do I need to do? And no one replies. So I know it's a non-compliance. I would, would ask, I mean, that's a situation where a superintendent and a school committee chair need to reply. Thank you. The, um, the strategy, once a FOA request is received, a strategy needs to be crafted uh, by the affirmative, uh, by the uh, access, information access officer, uh, who in most cases is a superintendent, you know, to be able to identify where and how that information will be collected to be able to then be uh, provided to the uh, person who's made the request. Should we utilize sending it to the ombudsman so they have it and they can utilize it and say this was a follow request because the process isn't working now? No. Okay. I, over time, that may yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think the ombudsman is being inundated with information. Yeah. Other questions about this one? No. no. Okay. Other questions in general? Yes, yeah, so I had asked you about the why you won't share the password for the policy database, and that's the first on the charge of duties for the law of we're assigned. Um, and that was something in your training that I thoroughly enjoyed last year down in Augusta. Um, can you better explain why you are choosing to alienate other board members who are paying you dues? I'll oh, talk about that. I, I would say that you individually are not paying dues. Uh, the school board is paying dues. Right. So it's the school board who is the member of MSBA. It's not individuals who are members of MSBA. So we're all board members, so we all should have equal access according to your, I no, sent you the, the information. The board, um, and this is information that we also made available to the superintendent and the board chair that uh, the board the board is the member and so the board chair and the superintendent do receive that uh, uh, policy password and part of that is to protect the integrity of the database and so uh, the, the board chair as well as the superintendent have the information and so whether it's given to the, the uh, policy committee chair or how it's shared within the board uh, that's the decision that's that's made at, at this level it's not something that we share to everybody but it says in your that we'll have equal access and we're all board members so I want to understand why it is that I've had it until July you guys changed the password and you are now withholding it from all elected board members the dues are paid by for all board members that have equal access that's, that's the statement that we've had, and that was in there before, and whether we made it available before, I, I don't know uh, why in terms of that particular training everybody received it, whether that was a policy night and it may have come in, uh, gone over by uh, It was you at the convention. It was you yeah. and I sitting at a convention <clears throat> to a room of a room, uh, hundred people. It's, it's available you know, to your school committee, um, and uh, the information is available uh, to your school committee. 
and how they share that is, is your decision as a school committee. So, thank you. So they are allowed to withhold the information. This is provided in, in uh, that statement that I sent you and that I also sent um, to uh, uh, so what So if our duty is to serve the community and, and to bring policies forward that will help our school, why would we want to encourage the chair to not allow the board to fulfill their duties to bring policy forward? What duties are we not able to fulfill? Any policy that we or anyone wants to bring forward or look at. What do we want to bring forward? I'm happy that we can discuss it as a board, and, I can, and we can log in, and we can get it. How would I know if I don't have access to the database? There's no okay, reason to well, withhold it. Why, why well, must you do that? What are we looking for? I just explained to you any policy. But we act as a board, so we can look at it together. I know that. We we're, should all look at it together. We're not going to continue to discuss this. We've already talked about it. But discussing it because you are choosing to withhold information to the entire board or to one board member. You know, it's not to one board member. It's just Micah and I that have access to it. We haven't even provided it to them yet. She has her own school board out in Carmel. So I'm trying to understand why, what do you gain she by withholding it? Oh, we were given the recommendation that this oh, password so is to be shared by. So it, it, see, you're saying recommendation. He's saying you have the authority. You said he would give it. He's not. I'm asking you, why would you want to withhold that information? And if we are withholding it, then we shouldn't be paying them because we're not equally getting the representation. The representation is given to the board. Right. As we're a, the board. All of not us. Not individually. All together, we're the board. Together, you, you meet together so we as a board. all get to have the same information. What is it that you want to research on your own? We're happy to be able to get it to you. It doesn't sound that way. It sounds like you want to withhold it. I'll get you the information that you want to be How able to How will I know if I don't have access to the database to know what's there? Uh, it's an I'm not going to discuss the item further. It's unproductive <laughs> and toxic. I make a motion that we open it to public comment for questions. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. What if the questions are for them? They can filter them through. From the safe code, yeah. Thank you. stuff, but as far as the authority, I thought we just heard that the chair doesn't have any authority. And so either the chair has additional authority, contrary to what Mr. Bailey just said, or, or somebody's not following through on, on what Mr. Bailey just said. So maybe you could offer just a little input on that. <clears throat> or not. Thank you. 
Next up is Danielle Harrington. I was curious, um, Mr. Bailey mentioned our unusual structure with the two additional people from out of our communities and from like the uh, committee. And I was just curious if other towns have that structure. Maybe you could ask the main school board association if other towns have that structure. And just curious with their town, so you could look at their town charters, maybe, just out of curiosity. And then I'm curious, I didn't hear this said tonight, where do lawsuits fall? Are they under the authority of the school committee or are they under the authority of the superintendent? Does the school committee have to vote before a lawsuit can be acted upon? And is it within line with state law to vote by secret ballot? Is that allowed by state law or not? Is another question I was curious about. And lastly, does the, uh, not that I need it, but we've listened about the policy a couple of times, and I'm just curious, do they have a master list of all policies that are listed? I know Haley's been saying that she doesn't know what to ask for because she doesn't know what's in there. Is there a master list that could be provided to the whole committee maybe as a compromise? I don't think it's ideal, personally. I think everybody on the council, I mean on the committee should have the ability to access the database, but in the absence of allowing that for some reason, could a list be provided? Thank you. <coughs> All right, next up, Regina Leonard. Um, I thought we said this was a workshop so that you could kind of maybe have conversation. Um, the word I've heard over and over and over today is communication and respect. So that's your two problems right there. They have been the problem from the get-go. The lack of communication the lack of respect to each other. Stephanie is chair with her condescending, passive aggressive questions back at Haley, and you're not answering her question. So there, there is no reason whatsoever if you're gonna be respectful and have communication and be transparent so you all can work together to all have the same information. Not for you to have it over here and say, well, I don't, you have the authority apparently, or do you? Because that they're all confused about that, to hand that password over. So to do the right thing and to hand it over. But just to be passive aggressive about it, hang on to it, it's just creating more trouble when it could just be solved. Mm -hmm. Period and done. One of the best things I saw tonight that I would like to see you all do, which I've talked about, is I love when we have workshops at town meetings and we all can talk and communicate. And there's feedback from uh, the townspeople and the taxpayers. And I would like to see what he mentioned tonight with the eval and the walk workshops. That should be like number one on Monday, let's put it on the agenda and let's talk about that and start implementing that. Because again, that's gonna create more open communication was the word of the night. And then that's gonna gain respect amongst each of you and maybe from us to you, which would help to solve and to close this ridiculous gap and this fight that we continue to have. So that's it, thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, Terry Camp. Yeah. It's been very obvious from sitting in the audience seats that some members of the school committee speak and regard other members with disdain, respect, and rudeness. Everyone here wants what is best for the students in our district. Even though disagreements happen, it's no reason that someone should, uh, someone with whom you disagree, should be you should be have a disrespectful demeanor and tone of voice. You are all elected by the people of this community to represent us. Please use manners and demeanor that you would like to have used. I did, with you when being spoken to yourself. Thank you so much. Uh, we will close public comment. Can we get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Thank you so much.